So you could write your own service worker code, but we've actually got a few libraries that can help you out with yeah. this stuff. So I think when you start writing service worker stuff, you end up writing a lot of boilerplate to a certain extent. Yeah. Like there's common patterns that I think everyone wants to do. The first one is everyone will have just static assets they're going to want to cache. Yeah, stuff that you know might make up an application shell, um, stuff that might be just like images and CSS and icons and so on. Yeah, things like logos are a great example where you'd probably want to cache them up front because they rarely change and you've got solid control over them and they're just always there. Yeah. Um, so for the first thing, for that pre-caching step, there is Service Worker pre-cache. And basically what that is, is it's a runtime step. And all it does is you can basically do one of two things. Um, well, no, you can do two things with it. One of them is just glob for a certain set of files. So you pass in um, a path, and then you can basically say a regex of like, well, I want anything in these directories that ends in .js, HTML, CSS, or whatever you want. Um, and that is just, it will go find them and it saves them. But it yeah. also does file revisioning. Yeah, so changes to your build process will also update your service worker so you don't have to take care of file revisioning yourself. Exactly. And the nice thing with service worker pre-cache is it's super efficient. Yeah. So normally, like when I think I first wrote my service worker, what I ended up doing was just saying, delete the entire cache and create a new cache yeah. with almost all of the same assets apart from one that had changed. So service worker pre-cache will only update that one that is old and needs updating. Yeah. Super cool. And it's got good best practices built in, works really well on its own, but also if you're using Gulp or Grunt or whatever have you, it plays well with those as well. Yeah, exactly, because it's just a node module. Um, the other thing that it does is you can say for this endpoint, so you might say for the home page, you can also say it's built up of these individual files, so templates. That's also super nice because, again, it will cache the home page, but it won't change it until it's updated. Yeah, and Service Worker Precache uses a cache-first approach to tackling things, so you always get like things, your assets serve really, really fast. Yeah, regardless. so Service Worker Precache acts under the assumption that basically once you've cached something, you'll only ever get it from the cache. That's it. Until you do a new build, you release a new Service Worker, then it will get updated. Yeah, but it's configurable enough to allow you to go and switch that up to network first to another strategy if you want. Super cool. The one thing that I would say everyone should check out is an option called Handle Fetch, which is an option on SW Precache. And basically, while you're developing, if you set that to false, you're basically saying, build me a service worker, but just skip the fetch event. And what that means is while you're developing, nothing's going through the service worker, which sounds kind of counterintuitive, but once you've set up Precache and it works, you really don't want to be using yeah. service workers at all. You just yeah. want it to skip, yeah. and then you check it at another later stage. Yeah. So that's awesome. Cool. So we've talked about a helper, for, build time helper for dealing with sort of your shell, your static assets. What about runtime and dynamic content? So that's where you have um, Toolbox. And what Toolbox is, is you basically define a path. So it can be like an express style route, or it can be a regex. And then you either pass in a caching function that Toolbox has, or you pass in your own callback. And basically, what that allows you to do is things like this. So you'd go toolbox.router.get. You'd pass in a regex. In this case, I'm going to say forward slash. And you might find um, home screen equals true as query parameter. And for that, I want you to do toolbox.fastest. And in this case, toolbox.fastest is try the network and try the cache. And then whichever one returns first, give that to the browser. And the nice thing with it is the network will, once it's come back, will be stored into the cache, which yeah. is super nice. So it's good for like large or infrequently used resources. Yeah, exactly. And Toolbox comes with a ton of different caching mechanisms, the mechanisms out of the box. Network first, cache first, fastest, blah, blah. There's a whole ton of them. Um, but it's entirely geared towards just runtime caching. And it's kind of nice because you end up saying, for this path, do this thing, for this path, do this thing. Um, which you end up writing in your own service worker if you just did it all yourself anyway. Yeah, I've, I've heard a few people say that you know service worker you know involves a lot of boilerplate or it takes longer to learn. I, I first that wasn't my experience personally, but like using precache and toolbox, I found that a lot of the time it takes like less than twenty or thirty minutes yeah. to get things set up. It's it's usually pretty nice. Like I wrote my service worker for my site on my own. It ended up with a couple of like random weird little issues, but it was useful for learning. But afterwards, I realized that I could replace pretty much all of it with like six lines of toolbox code, yeah. which is kind of depressing, but at the same time, it's kind of reassuring yeah. that it's vaguely on the right path. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say people should just check it out and give it a go. Yeah, it'll definitely save you time. So yeah, yeah. check out SW Toolbox, SW Precache, and follow the links. We've also got um, code labs coming up for both these tools. So yep. check those and out as well. 
hit any issues, then raise them on GitHub. <laughs>